this webinar is on rules module so rules module is uh, used extensively when we require things like there's a uh, event uh, and corresponding to that particular event there's an action and there could be some particular conditions depending upon which that particular uh, action could take place or not take place so let's take a simple example of that suppose uh, we have a simple event called a uh, user logs in so we might want to send a notification to the user like uh, hello user you have logged in to the to your site so and this is this particular notification would be an action so a corresponding condition would be like don't send the notification in case the user is the administrator of the site so we require such kind of conditions uh, events actions and conditions frequently in uh, drupal and rules module is a way to do that so in case we go to the so this is the uh, project page of the rules module so so like uh, this, this particular module has a uh, dependency on the entity module so this particular webinar would basically with the only for drupal 7 so in case we download this particular module using crash or the traditional downloading it from here and uh, and putting this particular module in the site all modules folder and uh, suppose uh, like instead of and uh, after that so let me go back to the presentation so so like, like this so let me begin with a little bit of an introduction so i just gave like what exactly rules module is used for and after that i showed you the project page of the rules module and uh, like this is an example uh, scenario where in the rules module could be used so let's uh, just go with an example first so i'll switch to the browser back and this is a plain drupal installation so in case we go to modules and i'll look out for rules so the rules module is uh, installed and enabled on this particular drupal installation and this particular module requires entity tokens and entity api as a dependency so once you install entity token token the entity api you could easily enable this module on your drupal installation so let us go to the configuration of this module so let's go here so we add a new rule which was defined in the example so i add a new role rule called send a notification to the user so so like we see a couple of events over here so the event which we want to uh, capture in this particular scenario is be a user has logged in so i i save this thing so we have a, a rules created wherein the event is the user has logged in so we create a corresponding action for that so i add an action over here so the action is suppose i do a simple action called show a message on the site so i would do this hello and use a replacement pattern from here or call this account name this would do so hello account name and i save this so in case i go to another browser and this is the same drupal installation opened in chromium so i would log in as a test user test test so i get the thing hello test and i would log out again so what is happening so right now when we go to the rules ui configuration and create a new rule we see a couple of events uh, like there are a couple of events in the comment section couple of events in the node section and some of them in the uh, system taxonomy 
user, uh, etc. But there could be a scenario wherein we might have to define our own events and our own action. So this particular webinar would be defined on that. So I would basically proceed with a custom action, like how to code a add custom action uh, using rules API. So to uh, implement a custom action, we have to implement a hook called hook event uh, hook rules event info uh, to uh, implement a custom event we implement this particular uh, uh, hook so let me open uh, id so this is a custom module which i have which i would make during this presentation so this is the dot info file which has been already coded so the name of the module would be rules custom and this description is, is custom rules coding this is a small configuration like code, dependency, package name, etc. So this is the simple custom folder. And apart from that, this is like uh, whenever we implement any hook in the rules API, that particular hook uh, goes into uh, uh, a, a special file name, which would be the module name dot rules dot inc. So in my case, the name of the module is rules underscore custom so the file here would be rule underscore custom dot rules dot inc so here i would start off with coding a custom event so this is the php tag so this is the file mm -hmm. rules events actions and conditions so this is the one so now the next step would be like I would want to implement a custom hook so what I would do I would implement this particular uh, event uh, hook implements hook underscore rules underscore event underscore info so what we are doing and we are implementing this particular hook over here so function rules custom rules event info like uh, since we are dealing with the hook so the name the hook is re replaced by the name of the module over here so we would define an event over here so like the event in, is defined in this way. So I would create an array. Item is equal to array. And just to make sure, I would just return this array before coding the other stuff. So return items. Okay. And let me go to the documentation of this particular thing. We see like a couple of things like a label, type, group, etc. So while coding this particular hook, I would tell what, what exactly they are. So this is a particular uh, uh, event I am writing. So the event I would write here is paid user login. What happens in case a user uh, is not able to log in? To the site, so suppose he types in the wrong password. So this particular event, I would call it failed user login. So this is another uh, associative array. So this would go like this and finish it off here. So this is a event, mm, and this would uh, I would give a label to it. So label is failed user login and group like group is the thing under which category this particular event would come in so like we had a couple of things like user taxonomy comments no etc in the rules ui so we would define uh, our own group called rules custom so this is the one so variables is another interesting thing so let me think the coding part and then I'll explain what exactly it is. 
variables in, in an another uh, associative array. Clean this a bit. So this thing goes off like this. So variable is the uh, variables we want to use in this particular event. Suppose like uh, in case we talk about some pre-configured event which exists in the rules UI is like uh, send an email. So send an email to so and so person. So in that particular thing so and so person is a variable. So in our case we need to define a variable too. So I would define a variable called user object. User object. Now this is and another array like this and this has a type so in our case the type would be user there are a couple of other types depending upon one's requirement like in case you want the variable to be a node object the type would be a node and in case it is some other entity like taxonomy like there are a couple of other types which are available in this particular thing so after type we have a thing called label so what this particular thing would look like when you open the rules UI. So I would call this call this thing a user object. So let me save it. Let me do a typo error. So I guess this is done. So now now let's go back to the site again. This one is the site, so let me clear the cache again. So the cache has been cleared. So in case I go to configuration, workflow, rules, and now I add a new rule, add do a, some add a new rule. So this rule I would call it uh, failed user login notification. Okay, right. So in case I go to react on an event, so what like we see a new group called rules custom and in that particular group we see a new event called failed user login. In case we click this and do save. That's it. I mean, we have coded a new event. So, how this particular event would be used? So, like uh, this is the dot module file of this particular uh, module. So, like uh, like to call a particular event, you have to use uh, this particular function called rules underscore event underscore uh, and rules underscore invoke underscore event. So I am like the first argument to this particular function is uh, um, the event I want to call and the second thing is the variable. This is the same variable which I had put over here. Okay, so there is a little bit of uh, logic involved like the particular logic could be different in, uh, in different cases. So like uh, it's a simply uh, hook form alter like, like I'm altering the some of the validation procedures in the user login uh, form. So like this particular function alters the validation form and I do a little bit of checking over here and see if the user uh, the the user who wants to log tries to log in into the site is a valid user or not. And in case user fails to log in, I call this particular event. This event is failed user login and the corresponding variable is user. So that could be a different scenario. So let like the event has been coded. So let us add an action. So let's add a simple action over here. So let it be again show a message in the site. Hello. Just one second. Hello, username. This like Look over here, like in the replacement pattern, since we had used this particular uh, variable, the user object. So we do see a couple of replacement patterns for this particular variable. So we could use the user UID, the user mail, and etc. in our uh, actions, like while configuring our, 
action. So the best thing in our case would be to use the user name. So let's take this hello user name. Um, okay, you how type the wrong password. Okay, so let's put an exclamation mark. So let's do it here. And let's save this. Okay, so let's check whether I'm correct or not. So this is the site wherein I'll test. So this particular user was test and test. So in case I log in correctly, the first rule is triggered wherein user logs, user is logged in. So I will log out again and now I will try to type some random password from XYZ or something. So I will press log in. See like now what is happening, the event which we had coded like failed user login, like it is saying hello test you have typed a wrong password. So I write again one two three four five six and do a login again. So it is sort of triggering our custom coded event. This is the failed user login. So um, in a similar instance, like uh, the rules UI by default comes with a couple of good options, but like in case you go here, like in the user section. Like we have a user account has been deleted after saving a new user account, updating an existing user account, and a couple of more. But suppose we want to create a new event like the one we had created in this scenario. That was a failed user login. So this is the way. So all we have to do is we have to implement this particular hook, which is the hook rules event info. So in case you Go through the documentation of this particular hook. You could modify this particular hook according to your uh, uh, situation. So this is another custom module which I was trying to make, and it covers a couple of features. So, like in this particular module, a couple of events have been added. Like uh, there is an event which captures first time user log, use first time user login, decrease in user login frequency. Change in user IP address uh, in case a content receives a lot of comment, in case a content receives a lot of traffic, in case uh, like the failed user login. So, the last event of this particular module was uh, used in this webinar. So, in case you want to see how more uh, such events can be coded, like you could go through this particular uh, sandbox project. So, like in the next Step I would cover like how to code a custom event. So let's go with that. Just one second. So, 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 so. Like this. So to code a custom event, we have a custom action. We have to implement this particular hook. And this particular hook is called hook rules action info. So let's go with the coding stuff. Implements hook. Rules, rules, action, and so let's again this function rules custom rules action info. <laughs> So again, this action is uh, this particular thing returns an array, which is a set of actions. So let me return this before return slash this thing. Okay, so this thing rules custom welcome user. So I would create a simple action in this case, like same action which is quite similar to Drupal set message. So, so this is an, again an array. Let me close this. And so, so I'll explain the stuff after I finish the coding. So this would have a label again. So this is welcome a user. With uh, message. Uh, 
and this thing again has a group. Call this again rules custom. Okay. So let me just proceed with this thing. So so this is an action which has been coded. So in case we see in case we see this the this particular index of this array called action. This is the function which would be called for this particular action. So I need to create a corresponding fun function for that. So function to display the message. So just like this, and I would just simply call Drupal set message. Hello, welcome, user. Welcome back. Okay. So let's go to the rules UI again. So and create a dash. Okay, now got configuration rules. rules. So we would do the same thing. Let's delete this action and use our own action which we have coded. So this thing. So let's in case we click to our action and scroll down. So yeah, it's working. So rules custom welcome a user with a message. Since no configuration has been made for this particular action, so we just save it. I would delete this and send me to the user. Just delete this. I'm going to add a new rule. Welcome, my user. When would we would welcome when he logs in. When a user has logged in, create an event and action. We would use our own action. So, welcome a user with a message. <coughs> so, we save the changes. So, we go to this side again. So, we'll do the thing best. So, we see this particular thing. Welcome back. So this particular message is coming from this action which has been coded over here. So right now this particular message is hard coded. So how to uh, remove this hard coding stuff and give the option to the admin to configure the message message within the UI itself. So there's a thing called parameters. In case we go to the documentation, there's a thing called parameter in this particular uh, documentation. So how to use it, I'll tell this over here. So just, so I would use this parameter. Again, so parameter is again an array. Mm. And I would call this thing a message. Message is a parameter, which is again an array. And so this, so this, so type of this message is type is text, and 
again it is a label so p message to show to the user okay so now we have this thing label okay now we have a parameter and we can use this particular parameter in this function so i would make a include an argument over here message like this particular argument could be of any name like it could be abc but it's a good practice to use the same name which has been used over here so let's delete this and see whether it's working or not so let me global user and google set message like t i'll do this message and dot format username slash user okay. this is the one let's see whether it's correct or not we'll go to the ui and we would do it edit it sorry we need to clear the cache Let's delete this thing. So let's add an action. So let me refresh it. So I would add, add an action over here. So I'll go here. So it is here. So now we get the small text box over here. So I'll type my own welcome back. My dear. Okay, this was this looks good. And I save it. Okay, and let's check it if it is working out. Log out and do the test. Test test. Okay. So this is working on welcome back test. So this is the message which is coming from the UI and this is the username. So similarly like this. The event and the action which I had shown in this particular webinar was a really very simple one. So depending upon your requirement, you could uh, develop your own actions and events. Like actions are not that uh, complex, but thinking about an event is a bit of a complex thing. Like uh, like in this particular module, I have uh, coded a couple of events, like which is first time you the login, failed user login, decrease in user login frequency, change in IP address, increase in uh, content type, comment count, increase in content access traffic. So, so this is a place where we define the event and the corresponding when to call that particular event is altogether a different logic which we have, you have to code on your own. And when that particular logic is fulfilled, you have to call that event using this particular function. This is the, e, this is the function name, this is the first argument, which is the event, and this is the variable. So I guess that's it for today. Okay, so thank you, thanks a lot. So um, like, uh, I'm done with many more, uh, like, uh, the webinar is open for the questions and apart from that, that like uh, this particular webinar was from Citizen Technologies and we are the only Acquia Enterprise Partner in India and the official training partner of India, uh, uh, official Drupal training partner in India. So like the webinar is now open for questions. So.
thanks uh, ashish it was a nice great webinar uh, with a lot of practical examples involved mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, guys can uh, we can we can have a round of question right now so if you have any questions please shoot in uh, ashish will take in one by one uh, you can if there is there is some uh, queries that you want to ask privately you can ask either me or ashish on the chat message um so anyone anyone who wants to ask a question yeah uh, ashish gorav am i audible mm -hmm. yes yeah yeah ishan yeah. go ahead hi ashish yeah hi ashish yeah. uh, hi ishan what's your was just curious about the first example that you gave regarding uh, the failed login uh, event i was mm -hmm. just wondering how how we got the user object from there because it's an anonymous user at that point of time and mm -hmm. uh, okay. we have okay, right. the user object as the variable and you're showing the user name in the message so is it just picking mm -hmm. it up from the form or i was just wondering yeah, how we got the user object yeah. at that uh like Like okay, a test picking up the form. So in case like you see this particular thing in the form state, I'm uh, picking up the username from the form. Yeah. So this particular username and uh, like I'm doing a little bit of query and getting the UID and loading the user and this particular user object is given as a variable. Like there, there could be a better way to do this, but this is a sort of brute force method of wherein which I had used to call this particular event. So there could be a better way to do it. So no, no, okay, okay. I probably missed this part. Okay, yeah, got it. I think only the okay. probably yeah. naming yeah, of like that the, object can be something else. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shashank, in case you go to this. Yeah, Ashish, please. Yeah, no, no, just um, I'm done. Okay, uh, Shashank, uh, you you have a question, please. Can you can you please ask that on a mic, or do I do I need to go and ask that? Uh, no, no, no. I can. I just I was wondering whether okay. I was uh, online or not, so I just typed it in. Uh, Ashish, can you hear me? No, uh, yeah, Shashank, you are not audible. Can you speak uh, a little yeah. louder? Ashish, can, yeah, Ashish, can you hear me now? Can everyone hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to add it. Yeah, okay. So my question here is uh, more to understand from the perspective that uh, how much customization do you think uh, uh, a site might require in terms of rules module? I mean, uh, the major question that I have is uh, what all can be done using rules module itself, and what are the things that you actually need to customize uh, to make it work? <laughs> Like okay, so things that like uh, rules uh, module itself comes with some coded uh, like pre-configured events and actions, but there could be some scenario that particular um, event or action could be missing. So there's a module called the rules bonus pack by Johan Fuld from Node One. So he covers a lot of uh, custom events and actions, but that particular module is in sort of dead state. So like uh, suppose to be some Uh, suppose we come uh, come across a scenario like the change in ip address of a user so there is no such module which sort of uh, takes this particular thing into uh, consideration so like in case we see like there's no other contributed module or some other rules enhancement which would uh, fit our use case then we have to custom code our rules e uh, event like Shishan, I mean, uh, is that clear? So, like, like most of the thing, it could be like, like the I took an example of failed user login. So, failed user login is not covered in any of the modules. So, and coding a event is really easy. So, all we have to do that uh, use that hook, and uh, but the logic part could be a little bit of uh, difficult. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm basically just trying to understand. I mean, what is the Uh, how much of a customization might actually be required? So, for example, you actually gave an example of the login module uh, 
uh that could be uh, that could be used so uh, was basically just trying to understand if there are other scenarios where customization might be required but i get your point mm-hmm. okay.